the planetary defense system is used to track near-Earth objects. NASA established the Planetary Defense Coordination Office, and so far they have detected countless near-Earth objects. It's an uncomfortable truth that we're vulnerable within the universe. It's a fact that asteroids approach the Earth every year. There's never a guarantee of total safety, and it's just a matter of sheer luck as to whether we're directly hit. NASA has just sent their DART spacecraft up into space. DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, and it's set to crash into an asteroid on purpose, all in the name of research. DART was sent up in a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Its mission will then take place in September of 2022, when NASA will deliberately route DART to crash into an asteroid to test the asteroid deflection technology. Sensors and cameras in space though don't always detect things that can be easily explained, and every year strange objects in space are caught on camera, usually leaving us with more questions than answers. This is what happened when Athena noticed a strange object flying close to the International Space Station. She was able to take some screenshots of the object, but couldn't explain what this large object was. She said the following, just two days ago I was watching the live International Space Station cameras, and these are the photos that I was able to take. This thing was flying right in front of the ISS. It looks like a huge mothership. Athena goes on to mention that this isn't the first time that she's seen strange objects flying close to the International Space Station, but notes that this object was particularly big, and that it could easily be seen via the space station cameras. Often when strange objects are seen in front of the International Space Station cameras, they are normally small and passed off as things like space debris or camera anomalies. But this is one of the biggest objects that's been recorded flying in front of the ISS. Those who often watch the live cameras have said that seeing these anomalies is not uncommon, and what's strange about them is sometimes they hover around the ISS, almost as if inspecting it before flying off. NASA has said that these objects can easily be explained as things like space debris, noting that the area above our planet is littered with millions of objects, many of which make their way in front of the cameras, and makes it look like something is flying past. Although this explanation is widely accepted by scientists and researchers, there's many who have said that this isn't what's being seen, and that on a number of occasions when these objects fly in front of the cameras the life feed shuts off. This has led some to say that NASA often switches off the live cameras, because they don't want people seeing these objects, saying that the debris explanation would make sense if these cameras didn't shut off every time something flew in front of them. As with any discussion around mysterious flying aircrafts, there's some who hold on to the belief that these crafts are real, while skeptics have said that all people are seeing is space debris flying in front of the cameras. Another mysterious object that was seen close to the International Space Station was this one, with one user who saw it saying that it was in the shape of a triangle, and that it could be seen flying past the ISS. The lights didn't flash, and reminded some of the triangle crafts that are seen around the world. It's still up for debate what they are, with some saying that they are a type of hyper-advanced stealth aircraft, while others think they don't belong to us as they've been witnessed for over 70 years now, and old documents that have been released by the government have detailed that they're able to travel at extremely fast speeds, can avoid being detected on radar, and also have the ability to hover motionless. One user said the following about this object, How can people say this is a piece of space debris? It's blatantly an aircraft that's close to the ISS. Some of these photographs don't look like crafts at all, and definitely go in the category of space debris, but this one doesn't. I'm sure this is a triangle-shaped aircraft. End quote. NASA is currently concentrating on near-Earth objects. They said the following on their website. Near-Earth objects are asteroids and comets that orbit the sun-like planets, but their orbits can bring them into Earth's neighborhood 
within 30 million miles of Earth's orbit. For example, back in 2018, we saw more than 91 Nimitz hits of different asteroids of all sizes. The scary thing is out of 91 asteroids that passed by us, only 30 of these asteroids were seen coming prior to their passing, and only two of those were discovered one year ahead of the Nimitz event. This means that for more than 89 of the asteroids nearly striking the Earth in 2018, only two of them could have been prevented with our current tank, showcasing just how threatening these large celestial bodies can be. Recently, an asteroid by the name of 2019 OK made headlines around the world. This wasn't because of its size, but rather because of its sudden appearance in our sky. We had no idea it was close to our planet until the day it passed by us. Again, this just shows how fragile we really are. Our best scientists and researchers had no idea this object was flying past until the last minute, and at that point it may have been too late. As of right now, it's looking like Earth is safe from many of these celestial bodies. Regardless, although many of these asteroids are still millions of miles away from us, the National Aeronautic and Space Administration has labelled these space rocks as being potentially hazardous. This comes down to the fact that at some point in the future, these could pose a threat to Earth, meaning that they get added to the long list of other asteroids that will need to be monitored in the future. Dennis Asberg from the OceanX diving team just released some new photographs of the Baltic Sea anomaly. He said the following, Interesting pictures from the object in the Baltic Sea. It looks like it's melted. It cannot be a volcano according to researchers, and when you look closely it looks like a cover of something that's melted and run over the sides of the object. What do you think? For those unaware, the Baltic Sea anomaly is a mysterious object that lies at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. It soon made headlines after its discovery due to its strange shape, and also because of a variety of different things that happened to the team while they were above the object. The Baltic Sea anomaly has a 60 meter diameter, and it was discovered by Peter Lindberg, Dennis Asberg and the Swedish OceanX diving team back in June 2011. The team made this discovery while they were looking for an old shipwreck. As they passed over the objects though, they received a mysterious reading. They'd never seen anything like this before, and were very excited by what this object could potentially be. According to Ocean X, the anomaly is around 3 to 4 meters thick, and has an approximate diameter of 60 meters. Interestingly, this large object is said to be sitting on a thick 8 meter tall pillar-like feature, and this can be found at around 85 to 90 meters. One thing the team have noted though is that the visibility is really bad, and although 90 meters doesn't sound deep, it's really hard to see anything when you're down there. The team reported that on one of their first expeditions they started to experience some malfunctions in their equipment. They didn't think much of it, but as they passed the object everything started to work as normal again. Thinking this was just a one-off they went back over the object, and once again their equipment stopped working. This has caused the team to speculate that this object is giving off some kind of electromagnetic field. They've tested this on a variety of occasions, and every time they do so their equipment stops working. Ocean X professional diver Stefan Hoggerborn said the following about it. Anything electric out there and the satellite phones as well stopped working when we was above the object. When we got away around 200 meters, it turned on again, and when we got back over the object it didn't work. These new photographs have revealed some interesting details, with some users noting that it looks like there's a cover over the original object, and that you can definitely make out there's layers here. This has led some to share their theories on why this is, with one user saying that this could be due to how long the object has been down there, while others said that if this thing did crash then it could have heated up the seafloor, which in turn led to some layers forming over the top of it. 
Others pointed out that it looks like there's some type of mechanical tubing coming out of this object, which has only fueled theories that this could have been something advanced, and that when this object skidded along the seafloor it then started to break up, and this could be what we're seeing here. This user said the following, This is one of those photographs that looks blurry at first, but then you start to stare at it for a while and you can see some interesting details. The visibility where this object is is known for being murky, but we can see that this thing looks to have layers on top of it, while the underneath looks to be intact. Clearly something hit the bottom of the sea at extremely high speeds, which in turn caused a rapid temperature increase. The sediment seems to have melted over it. End quote. The team explored the object for a second time, and what they found only caused more confusion. As the divers approached the object, they could see what appeared to be a dark staircase leading into the object. Interestingly, tests were sent off to try and determine what the object was, and what it was made of. Steve Weiner said that according to his tests, the object was not a geological formation, and further said that the structure was made from metals which nature could not reproduce itself. The OceanX team further said that the craft looked to be even bigger while down there, and compared it to the size of a passenger plane. Interestingly, while down there they said that they could see what appeared to be a trail behind it. This is also backed up from the sonar images. This has led to people suggesting that whatever this object is, it came to a stop by crashing. These skid marks can easily be seen on the ocean floor, and they baffled the team when they first saw them. Outside of the object on the surface, the researchers have also reported seeing unusual carvings, almost like unnatural looking shapes. The wreckage sits at a depth of 90 meters, and waters in the area are always muddy, factors that make it virtually impossible to film or photograph the area. Peter Lindbergh has said it's not a natural formation, saying that they've had tests sent off, and researchers have said that this could not have occurred naturally, with geologists having told him that this object is definitely not an underwater volcano. Each time the team have gone back to investigate the object, they've said that they've had difficulty finding it, saying that going back a while ago the team returned to the site, and they decided to drop down an ROV. However, when it reached a few meters above the anomaly, the team said the compass went berserk. What's interesting is the first time they went to the anomaly something similar happened. Peter Lindbergh said the following about the event. It was very difficult to understand where the ROV was, because of the terrible visibility and because of the compass that went berserk. The compass was living its own life, and the tether was snagged all the time. The fact that electrical equipment keeps malfunctioning when the divers are above this object has led some to say that there's more going on here than what we're being told about, and that this object has the ability to interact with the electromagnetic field. So what do you make of these new photographs, and what do you think they show? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.